I've been waiting, you guys. My Bridgerton 2 collection order finally came in the mail. It doesn't come as fast now that I'm down in Florida. But nonetheless, I am so freaking excited. I will go over everything that I got. I will definitely do a direct comparison with the last Bridgerton collection palette. But yeah, I am really intrigued to play with some of these items, let me tell you. I did watch Bridgerton season two. I did finish it. If you saw my vlog, I gave you an update as to where I was halfway through, like how I felt. Yeah, I finished it and it was good. It really, really was good, but season one was better, in my humble opinion. I liked it, but I did not like Anthony. That was my Antony, sorry. <laughs> that was my problem. The main character, I just didn't jive with, so everything he did kind of, ugh, me. <laughs> so that's that. It wasn't my favorite love story, but I still loved it. I love looking at the outfits, the interiors of the homes. It's so colorful, still just as pleasing to the eye. I love Kate. But I did not like Anthony. He was kind of creepy to me. And just a little too intense for me. But anyway, that's not what this is about. I finally have the collection in my hands. So what I ended up picking up, of course, was the eyeshadow palette, the Belle of the Ball. And then I had to because Pat McGrath has never launched a palette like this. This is the Blushing Delight palette. And then I picked up five different lipsticks. The lipsticks, low-key, were the thing that I was most excited about in this collection. Pat McGrath lipsticks aren't my all-time favorite, but of course they're still a great formula. But the colors in here in particular looked stunning as did the packaging. I think I'll start off by covering the eyeshadow palette, then we'll get into the cheeks. And then we will finish off with the lip swatches. How does that sound? Just so you know, I passed on the scintillating diamond body shimmer. That was $52. There were two different shades. I decided to pass on it just simply because it was not a product that I would use. And while I was tempted to pick it up just for the review and for the packaging, it was $52. So that was just something I couldn't justify. And oddly enough, at the time that I placed my order, which is right when everything dropped, the legendary wear velvet cool eyeliner I couldn't add it to my cart so I just didn't order it I did though end up placing a second order and um, that is on the way to me but I don't have it right now unfortunately so yeah that was odd but I will update you guys on that in the future it's not even anything super exciting so those are the items that I did skip on let's get to the eyeshadow palette I'm gonna turn the lights down so that we can admire these swatches so this is the outer carton of the Belle of the Ball eyeshadow palette. It is going to be $65. It is still currently available on the website. And I do recommend that you look at the website online because it gives some ideas for creating looks and a closer look into the formulas and how and where you can use it. So it's just a normal box that opens from the side. Nothing fancy. Remember how uh, she used to have like a flap? Not in this one. Here is what the component looks like. So pretty and pink. I love it. And here is what the back is going to look like. As you can see, it is made in Italy. Look, my nail broke. So all of my other nails are so long. And then I have this stubby little finger. But made in Italy, 18 month shelf life. And just so you can see how it compares packaging wise to last year's palette. Because I was curious. They're the same, but they're different. As you can see, the last one was baby blue, of course. And then it's like a bow. This one is... There's the same but different. You can see that, right? And then the back, it's like different colored flowers. I haven't even opened it. Fingers crossed, nothing comes broken. Ah, here she is. So you do have the mirror. It says flawless, my dear. So here are how she describes the colors. A velvety plum matte, a peony pink satin matte eye blush, a luminous pale rose gold highlighter, and an electrifying pair of sparkling astral shades in a pastel aqua metallic and a divinely deepened chartreuse. Huh, what is this? Here's another like blitz astral shade. I don't know why she didn't mention that, but whatever. Let's watch these. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with the top row here, which is Refinement, Regal Romance, and Diamonds Desire. Ooh, so Diamonds Desire is a blitz astral formulation, as you can see right here. There's Refinement, Regal Romance, 
Ooh, yeah, Diamond's Desire. Let's get into Forbidden Amour, Daring Dandy, which feels very creamy. It feels kind of like a regular shimmer. And then of course, Forever Charmed, which looks stunning. So typical pat matte here. This is more like a shimmer. I wouldn't actually describe this as an astral shade. I think this one is the astral, in my opinion. And then so is Forever Charmed. But again, Forever Charmed, I feel like, is a hybrid of these two formulations right here, where it's like an extra glimmery shimmer. But this one really works truly as a shimmer, like a pale blue with a golden twist to it. But anyways, these are the six shades. Very pretty. Again, repetitive with the pinks. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you guys know I we didn't need any more pinks from Pat McGrath. So I wasn't in love, love, love with this palette if you saw my initial thoughts on this collection. But it, it's pretty nonetheless. I mean, who can lie? These two bottom shades, I wish you would have played on these more and shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, now let's do a quick comparison of the last palette because a lot of people thought that they looked very similar and I also agree with that. So the top one is the older one and then the bottom one is the new one. They're very similar, you guys. I mean, you can't tell me that they're not. The formulations are the same pretty much in the same place. We just have that additional Blitz Astral Chartreuse shade, but everything else looks the same. So I'm gonna do side-by-side -side swatches so that we can see if there is a difference. I'm just gonna wipe off this half of the swatches and let me get into the new palette. Okay, so this is the Bridgerton 1 palette and this is the Bridgerton 2 palette. So you can see these top two are similar, the Gelee formula is similar. These are very different. This one is deeper from Bridgerton 1, that's the matte in the corner, uh, but similar. The shimmers, the Blitz Astrals, are very different, if you ask me. And then, of course, this is the oddball here, so I didn't have a match for that. But that's how they compare. If you want my honest thoughts, if you have Bridgerton 1, I really don't think you need Bridgerton 2. I know these two are unique, but, I mean, look at that. That's pretty darn close. So just think about that make the most smart decision for you think of do you have colors in your collection that are similar to this the only thing i would say is like i prefer the tones of bridgerton one however if you were debating between one or two i would go with two because it is a little bit more unique so it just depends but i do like the bridgerton one color store i don't know Anyways, that's how they compare. I think it is of no shock to anybody that this palette for this um, season is not that unique. It's quite repetitive and I do believe you have dupes within the Pat McGrath collection. If you have the Sublime palette, you definitely have a very close shade to the Chartreuse shade. It's dupable. It is. This for me is more of a collector's item. I am a Bridgerton fan, so I enjoy having this. I love the packaging. Maybe you're a Pat McGrath collector. In that case, pretty justifiable, but if you're being smart about not having dupes, this is easily, easily a pass if you have collected a few Pat McGrath palettes here and there. But I'm going to do this eye and I will be back and we will put it on the eyes. I'm still excited. Even though I'm being realistic with you guys, I'm still excited for it. Before I actually get into the tutorial and this look, I want to test this shadow right here. This is the really extra glittery Blitz Astro shade on its own since I didn't do it on this look. I just want to see what the pigment is like. This is for experimental purposes. I'm taking this off, but obviously I will use it for this palette. I think it is so stunning. Look at that. Okay, so it does have a decently pigmented base. You can still kind of see the skin underneath, but it's not completely what I would consider a lid topper. Honestly, this is beautiful on its own. I'm about to just put the icy blue shade. What a fun, very simple spring look, right? If you do something like this, really icy. Okay, I just wanted to test that shadow. I wanted you to see what it would look like if you put it all over the lid. If you have some pretty crease shades underneath, it would glow and lighten up the eyes. It just didn't make the cut for this eye, but I thought I'd show you it. Um, she's stunning. Okay, let me take this off and we'll get into the actual look. Let's get into the tutorial. It was really fun and easy to do. So we're gonna start off with the middle shade right here. This shade is a beautiful formula for blush as well. I'm familiar with the 
formula from the first Bridgerton palette. So you can totally use this as a blush for a really monochromatic look. And I would have used it for blush, but obviously we have the blush palette, so I have to skip on that for today. But I am using a Wayne Goss number no. three brush, and I am blending this in the inner half of the crease. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna run it all along my lower lash line as well, just a little bit. But this is pretty much how every look with Bridgerton one started as well. This pink shade, she really doesn't give many other options that you can use in terms of a crease shade. It doesn't involve having to open up a new palette, so we don't have much choice in the matter, so yeah, this is how every look starts, right? And one thing that I did not like about the Bridgerton 1 palette is that every single look kind of looked the same. So we'll see if that turns out to be the case as well. So now we're going to use this shade right here. This one is definitely a bit lighter than the one in Bridgerton 1. Bridgerton 1, I know it has a name, but I'm just calling it Bridgerton 1. That's easier for me. It had a little bit more depth. But as you can see, this one still carries a lot of depth, but I did love that shade in Bridgerton 1. I think I like that matte shade better than this matte shade just because I feel like you can always lighten it up, but you can't get it to go deeper if it won't go any deeper, you know? And I'm gonna blend that out. We'll probably come back to this shade, so this is just to start us off. But I mean, as per usual, both of these shades work out beautifully. Great Pat McGrath quality, not disappointed by that at all. Also gonna take it on a Wayne Goss number 20 brush. Make sure I get it down here as well. With a Refer number two brush, we're just gonna go for the gusto and go into the chartreuse shade. I mean this, gorgeous quality. As you can see, no glitter glue, no wet brush, and it is showing all of its shine. Complain as I will with this palette, quality it is not short on, that's for sure. Look at that. How beautiful is that? I mean, half of me was just tempted to put this all over the lid and call it a day. I think the green and the plum make a really pretty look, but of course we have to do some testing. So next I'm going into this pale blue shimmer, and this is a refer number 26 brush. I love this. It's great for this purpose of the inner corner. It's a huge pencil brush, but look at that. And this is actually quite pretty as well. It looks a little lackluster right next to the chartreuse shade, which is crazy glittery. But again, take the chartreuse out. This would be gorgeous all over the lid as well with the plums. So at least the plums and pinks are flattering for the other shades. And I'm just gonna bring it just a little bit above the chartreuse. Like so, quite pigmented, very impressed. I was worried that this would be one of those shades that kind of washed away and lost their luster. Because sometimes shades like this can be chalky if the palette is not of quality. And this, I mean, it's of quality. Look at that, how stunning is that? So I'm also gonna take this light blue, I'm gonna carry it along the inner corner, and then I'm going to bleed that into chartreuse to pull everything together. Finally, we're going into this pale pink right here, pinky champagne, and I love this color. I think it is gorgeous for an inner corner and brow bone highlight, as well as all over the lid. You have so many options here. So I think this palette is more versatile than the first palette. I think the looks will look a little different because if you recall you might not I did the whole review with the Bridgerton palette I created a look love the look then I did like a three looks one palette with this all of the looks looked like the same and I was disappointed in that but I feel like if I were to do multiple looks with this palette I could make them look different but where the struggle lies with that is simply just like these two are the only matte shades and these are so shimmery, it's just hard to use those in the crease. It's possible, but it's still difficult. So that's why the looks end up kind of looking the same, because you don't have many options with the crease colors. But nonetheless, quality, fantastic. I mean, I love this look. I mean, I can't say anything more than that. You're gonna have to make your decision on if you feel like this is a palette that adds value to your collection, whether it be due to the colors, the formula, or just the overall aesthetic of it. I'm not mad at it. I like it. So. Well, let me put on some liner and lashes. We're gonna go into the thing that I was the most curious about. Here is the look with liner and lashes. Super gorgeous, but we gotta get in 
into the most peculiar item in this collection because Pat McGrath, you know, she's launched lipsticks before, she's launched eyeshadow palettes before, but she's never launched something like this before. So this is called the Blushing Delights palette, and she's expensive, you guys, $60. So this is made in Italy, and it has a 12-month shelf life. Here is the back if you do need to take a look. It's very lightweight, it's not heavy at all, and this is cardboard. It doesn't exactly feel luxurious to me. I love the packaging, I love the detail, I think it's so pretty, but she is large. I mean, here's the palette. She's wider than the palette. She's a little shorter, but I mean, it is not the average quad. You know, she's quite tall. It just won't fit in your drawer as well as a normal quad. This is clunky. It's more of a decor piece. I don't love that it's cardboard. It feels kind of cheap to me for $60. The top comes off really easily. Like if I flip it, it'll just come off. To me, it's just not the most well made. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how I would improve it. It looks gorgeous and I think it's super cute, but it doesn't scream luxury packaging to me. And that's that. And then here are the products on the inside. So we have three baked gelée blushes and then one highlight here on top. Again, this kind of screams Claire's makeup to me for some reason. I, I don't like the empty spacing. It makes this abnormally large and I don't like the looks of it. I like the way the packaging looks, but it doesn't do it for me. But this is a new formula from Pat McGrath. So I had to see. Let me know your thoughts on this. I'm very curious. Do you love it? Do you hate it? I feel like it's either one or the other, but let's get into the actual blushes here. So we have Aphrodisia, and then we'll do a budding romance. So you have to like pink. I, these are very pink blushes. Ooh, they feel great though. And look how smooth these are swatching. They're not overly powdery or anything. Feels like a really solid blush formula. This actually has a little bit of redness to it. And then let's get to the deepest shade. Very brilliant. I mean, one thing you gotta give Pat McGrath credit for is her products work for a lot of different skin tones, especially those with deeper complexions. And these are definitely gonna show on those who have deeper complexions. They have a lot of vibrancy to them. So we'll see how they work on my skin tone. I'm cleaning my finger. Let's get into the highlight up here, Champagne Venus. This doesn't feel as slick as the blushes. It feels a little bit more powdery, but it's not like loose powdery. It's not gonna be a mess or anything. Here's how it looks. It looks like there's some glitters in here. If you don't like glitters in a highlight, I don't think you'll like this. Yeah, there's definitely some fine glitter particles in here. Interesting. Let's see how they apply. I'm gonna use a refer number four brush, and we'll start off with this dolly kind of pink and i'm just gonna pat it oh yeah lots of pigment <sighs> lots of pigment okay Woo! and it's supposed to blend on with ease and that i do agree with um i feel like i did not press that hard and this is a lot okay and you can see my freckles and whatnot through because i am wearing the rare beauty skin tint and it's blending beautifully over the skin tints i would like to add wow Gorgeous, because it's almost like my skin is gliding over the skin beautifully. Okay, I'm gonna use a lighter hand. Let's try Aphrodisia. I did clean this brush. Tap it off. Oh my gosh. If you are fair, I don't know that you're going to love this product. I just think it's very pigment packed, but you can definitely wash it down. You just gotta be careful and like use a minuscule <laughs> amount of product. I gotta do something <laughs> about this side. I was not ready. I'll deal with that later. Now this one, I'm like gonna go like that and like look. Do you see how much I got on my brush? Then we're gonna focus it back here. So the pigment vibe check has been passed. Holy! So for those of you that are looking for that pigment, this is gonna give it to you. I don't know that I wanted that much pigment personally, but I can definitely make it work. Now that I know what I am working with, I will be careful next time. So I think the formulation though, really beautiful, glid on super nice. I think this definitely feels like a high quality formula to me. It feels much more high quality than it looks in my opinion. I was worried as you know, but I like this formula. I don't love it, 
just because of how pigmented it is for me, but that doesn't mean it's not good. It is a very, very beautiful formula. So I'm gonna go in with a Wayne Goss number 15 brush. I have been loving using fan brushes for highlights lately because I've just been loving the lightly blurred natural highlight look. I'll try it. This does have glitter on it, so that's why I'm like, careful. Yeah, and I think using a light fan brush like this really adds such a pretty dusting. This has a beautiful gold shift to it. Again, I don't think this is going to work great on fair people. There's the ever so slightest cast, but it definitely still works on me, and it's beautiful. I don't notice the glitters being too dramatic. They're definitely there. I got a little on my hair right here but it's not anything that is off-putting. I'm gonna use a little bit of a stiffer brush. This is a color that's gonna look really great on deeper skin tones as well. Oh, this is pretty. I do like this highlight. For a while there, I did not like any of Pat's highlight formulas, but I feel like she's been kicking butt with these formulas. How pretty! Oh my gosh, I do like this palette. The quality was good, so I'm super happy about that. I can't get over the blushes though, they're crazy. Like you get so much on your brush. I don't know why I'm choosing to add more. I know the blush here looks super uneven because of user error. All of the blushes look different on the cheek. Doesn't this look like it's about to fly out, right? Quality wise, this is really, really great. I'm very happy with this. Is it worth $60? Maybe. For me, I'm gonna say yes, just because of the novelty of it all. I think it's really cute and I do enjoy the quality of the product inside. I think she's still kind of expensive, but knowing that it's Pat McGrath, the formulas, which were the most important part, did not disappoint me. So I'm very, very happy with this. Okay, let's hop on over while we're here to the lipsticks. So all of them come in this super beautiful hot pink box that I will be keeping. Oh, I love it, I love it. Now in this collection, there were seven shades that came out, one of which is already existing in the line, Elson 5, which is a true red. I already have that, so I didn't order that. And there was one more, I think it's the deepest shade, which is Entranced, which is a warm flesh rose. Did not come in this order. I did end up picking it up with the eye coal, but I still do have five shades. I believe Elson 5 is the only repeat shade, though I am open to being corrected. I could be wrong. <laughs> I really could, but let's take a look here. First shade that we're going to go into is Nude Romantic 2. And the packaging is either going to be pink or blue in the lipsticks. So you'll see that this one is light blue. Now for me as a collector, it was worth at least picking up one of these because I mean, this bow I think adds so much character to this lipstick and makes it look so much more expensive. Here to interject, I forgot to talk about this. I thought that the packaging of these lipsticks felt lighter though. Like the normal Pat McGrath lipsticks feel heavier. Come to find out, these are less money and less product. So these are $28, her regular lipsticks are $38. That's a 30% decrease in price as well as there is less product. Now that's not as significant as a difference. So the weight it says on the website is 3.7 grams for the new Satin Allure lipsticks and then the grams in the regular Matte Trance $38 lipsticks online it says 4 grams. I feel like that's not even that much of a difference. I don't know, these are cheaper for some reason. They feel a little lighter, a little less expensive in terms of that, but I think they're cuter and I prefer this price point. So these are low key a good val a good value. <laughs> Stunning. I love it. I love it. And here's what this nude romantic 2 looks like. Beautiful rose color. This is a cool neutral pink nude. It's a satin finish. So you'll see it has some shine. Let's put her on. Obviously this is without a lip liner. It's not too far off from my natural lip shade. It's just more cooler, I would say. This is definitely a great everyday shade for me. I'm gonna get some good use out of this. Highly recommend this one. Love this color if you're into more nude kind of pink lips. I really enjoy this one. That one is a thumbs up. All of these are the Satin Allure lipsticks, by the way. And sorry, I totally forgot to mention this to you guys. 18 months shelf life, made in USA of US and imported ingredients. Veiled Rose is also in the baby blue packaging. 
What is this? Um, okay, a piece of plastic was in there. Uh, other than that, the lipstick does not seem to be touched, but that was weird. Veiled Rose is a mid-tone mauve pink. Definitely has a little bit more purple to it. Paired to Nude Romantic too. A hint more purple, but I would say uh, you definitely don't need Nude Romantic 2 and Veiled Rose. I think they're pretty similar. Romantic is just a little bit more nude. I keep in mind also as I am getting more into the swatches, my lips are darkening from the swipes. Got more blood rushing to them. Now we have Infatuation. This one is definitely deeper. This is a vivid cool tone berry pink. Ooh, that looks so pretty. Definitely more dramatic compared to the previous two. That's with one swipe. Wow. These lipsticks are super comfortable, gliding on beautifully. Obviously not the most perfect application, but this is definitely more dramatic. It goes with the deepest matte shade in the palette. Really pretty. I feel like this is a gorgeous fall color and it would be beautiful on its own. Now we're going back to the lighter colors. This is in the pink packaging, super cute. This is Venusian Peach, which is a light peachy nude. This swatch down here. It is looking pretty similar to the top one, but just a hint more peach. But let's see how it looks on the lip. Definitely more peach on the lips. All of these lipsticks are so pretty. This is one of my favorite lip collections that she's come out with. I normally skip on the lips because I have so many already and her colors don't call out to me, but this collection is superior. Best lip collection she's come out with in my opinion. Last one that I have, I believe this is the lightest one. So it comes in pink packaging. This is Negligé, which is a neutral pink beige. It looks as though it would be the lightest on the website but it definitely is not. It has a little bit more depth to it. This one is really pretty as well. They all kind of look similar, I feel like, on the hand, but they definitely had their differences on the face. Pretty. And it has a little bit more depth than the other nude shades. So I definitely don't think you need every single color from this collection because they're all in kind of that pinky peachy nude family. Well, the majority of them. Just with the price point, maybe pick up one or two. But all of them are beautiful and I still stand by them. This is my favorite lipstick collection from her. Alright, let me pull myself together, pull my thoughts together, and I'll be back to give you guys my final thoughts. Okay, so here is the final look with everything put together. I used Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Love Trap around the edges of my lips. And then I have Venusian Pink from the collection in the center and it's so beautiful so one thing i will say about this collection you cannot go wrong quality wise literally loved the quality of everything the lipsticks the cheek palettes and the eye palettes the item that you need the least is probably going to be the eye palette i think it is absolutely beautiful though i love the chartreuse shade i love the baby blue shade it's a gorgeous palette it's more of a novelty item if you have ask me more for the collector. You don't need this if you're not looking for repetition here, but the quality is really beautiful. So that's how I feel on it. I love the look that I got. This, you're gonna have to make the decision yourself if you think it's worth it or not. It's gonna take up a lot of space. It's harder to store, but it also is kind of like a novelty item. Again, you can put this in front of your vanity. It looks really beautiful. It doesn't, I don't know. I think it's a bit overpriced if I'm being honest. It just, it looks cheap to me though. <sighs> very mixed feelings. However, the quality of the blushes are really beautiful, especially for those of you with medium to deep skin tones. This formula is going to glide over your skin so pretty. The colors are going to pop. Amazing. The highlights as well. So maybe if you're more on the fair side, be wary of this. But yeah, great, great quality baked formula. So everything is really great. I just got an attitude about the way it looks apparently, but it is a nice product. And then all of the lipsticks, again, really beautiful. The packaging especially, what an experience. Love the packaging. I definitely don't think you need all of the nudes in this collection because they do run pretty close if I'm being honest. But if you can pick up like one pink one and one blue one, I think you'll be set. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am very much looking forward to getting that eye coal in and really playing with that and the Art Chartreuse shade. I just know the looks will be insane. Very ill-fitting in the collection, but I'm still excited about it. But everything is really great. Gets my thumbs up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you pick this collection up, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? 
I want to hear it. And with that being said, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.